Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the very first Now at Netgear from Home. Um, I am Alec. I am an interactive media specialist here at Netgear. So that means I do a lot of the photography and graphic design that you're going to be seeing on our site and on our social. And I'm joined uh, by Arun and by Ben. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Hey guys. My name is Arun Kulatmani, and I'm a product manager at Netgear in the Connect and Home segment. I manage some of the Nighthawk Mesh products in addition to range extenders. So happy to be here and hope everybody's staying safe and you know doing well. Awesome. Hey everyone, my name is Ben. Um, I am the, the product expert. You might remember me from some segments at CES and unboxing videos. Um, I'm really all over the place. So glad to be here and uh, Arun, nice to see you. Alec, how's it going? <laughs> Doing Let's great. Kick Doing Let's good, kick it yeah. off. Yeah. So basically, the whole purpose of this uh, this event is basically to kind of um, introduce and kind of dig deep into what Nighthawk Mesh is. Um, in in the course of our um, live Q and A's, we've gotten some questions. You know, what's the difference between Orbi? What's the difference between you know that and Nighthawk Mesh? Um, we want to make sure that there's some clarity on that, and so that you guys can understand like the specific use cases. Um, you know, what is right for your situation? Obviously, everybody has a different um, need for Wi-Fi, whether you have a large home, a small home, a big family, small family. There's all these different, you know, scenarios, um, and you're going to need a specific um, kit for each scenario. So um, this is going to be kind of, a, you know, a living show. So please ask questions in the chat. We're here to answer all of them. Um, we want to make sure that, you know, we make this as um, interactive for you guys and, um, you know, allow you guys the opportunity to chat with us real time. So, um, you know, Ben, I'll, I'll let you just kind of introduce what is mesh Wi-Fi. I mean, my understanding is kind of, you know, you've got the dedicated backhaul and you've got one SSID and, and it really allows you to cover a, a large space. But if you want to kind of dive into, um, you know, that, that deeper level of what is mesh Wi-Fi. Right. I, I think to really understand what mesh Wi-Fi is, you kind of have to take a step back to what we are so used to when it comes to Wi-Fi technology in your home today. Um, you know, five, ten years ago, you really only had your Wi-Fi router in your home, and that's how you got connected. Uh, you could buy range extenders and thing like, things like that. But as we know, range extenders aren't really the best solution when it comes to getting good Wi-Fi all throughout your home. But that's where mesh technology came in, and it was a very flexible way to... Um, get Wi-Fi upstairs and downstairs uh, across in, into that, uh, you know, your kid's bedroom so they can, you know, stay connected and, and uh, work on their, their homework or, um, you know, chat with their friends, be connected with the family. Um, and, and, and that's really where Mesh came into play with things like Orbi, right? It's been a couple of years since we came up with Orbi, and, and now we're taking another step further with Nighthawk Mesh um, for the, the customer and the user that really wants to have that customizability, um, you know, the full control over their network. Um, and Arun's done a great job of bringing that product to market, um, and it's been a great success. Um, so Arun, what really makes Nighthawk Mesh different from all the other mesh systems out there? Yeah, I mean, I mean typically you, you hit the nail on the head because um, usually, you know, a single router might be okay to serve a home, which is, you know, kind of a smaller square footage and you have minimal number of devices. But as your Wi-Fi needs is keeping on growing, you're actually bent upon, you know, your your ISP or your provider might be giving you your internet coverage at the point where it's uh, easiest for them to bring it in. So, so your router is positioned only at that, that place next to where the modem can sit. So unfortunately, if you have, you know, different kind of construction or different kind of uh, materials building in the home and you have bedrooms on one side of the house and your internet is coming on the other side, you typically tend to not get all the uh, coverage and the speed everywhere in the house. So that's where you know, having a multiple unit system, like for example, in the case of RB or Nighthawk, you have one router and multiple satellites that you can place everywhere in the house that will help you to get the coverage. So the router goes wherever the internet comes in and the satellites can be distributed throughout your house. So that helps you to get the coverage. So that's that's in general, you know, how a mesh technology helps to solve it. But uh, speaking of just Nighthawk mesh itself is, you know, um, I want to make sure everybody's familiar with uh, Wi-Fi 6. So I think, Ben, we have you know, talked uh, great in length about Wi-Fi 6, what it gives customers benefits. So maybe we should touch upon that first and you know, uh, have any questions on that. Uh, that's, that's where I would start. 
Yeah, that, that's kind of the common question I hear from anyone who, who's looking into new Wi-Fi is, what's this Wi-Fi 6 thing? What is AX and AC and N? I, I don't know what these mean. So, Too many Arun, can you break it down for us? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? What does it all mean? Yeah, so, so Wi-Fi 6 is basically the sixth generation of Wi-Fi. So if you remember, you know, almost 10 years ago, or maybe even earlier than that, you had different generations of Wi-Fi, and you had like B, G, N, and then recently we had the AC, and that is replaced by AX. So Wi-Fi 6 is basically same as AX, which is the sixth generation of Wi-Fi. So if you go back, you know, 6 is Wi-Fi uh, 11 AX, 11 AX, 5 would be 11 AC, and 4 would be 11 N. So to make it easier for people to understand and, you know, uh, make it uh, simpler, the concept of Wi-Fi 6 was brought in. And this is taken a leaf out of similar to the 4G, 5G kind of playbook, right? If you, if you, you know, uh, look at it from that angle. So it's, it's, uh, it's basically sixth generation of Wi-Fi. And the biggest benefit of Wi-Fi 6 is going to be how you increase the capacity for your house. You know, this is more about having number of devices in the home, which is going to stream Wi-Fi even more uh, than what you did several years ago. Yeah, and I think that it's really good timing in the industry right now to have um, Wi-Fi 6 be the next generation, um, especially given that capacity is such a big aspect of Wi-Fi 6, right? Like, you know, we always make the highway analogy um, at Netgear. You know, it, it's you're, you're taking a six-lane highway and making it a 15-lane highway with Wi-Fi 6. And I think it's great timing because, you know, in the tech world, IoT devices are becoming so popular and people are going to have Alexa... Google Fire Stick 4K in their home, um, and all of those are going to be hogging bandwidth. And Wi-Fi 6 is really a great solution for that. So, um, yeah, yeah. Case in point, actually, I I just yeah. uh, moved my house this uh, end of last year, and the first thing that I was looking for is I mean, mode is okay. I set up my you know Nighthawk mesh in there, but then the first thing I did was buy the Arlo security cameras and then placed everywhere. So I was looking for how do I make sure I get coverage. And the next thing is, okay, I got security covered. Now what next? And next comes, you know, how do you clean the house? So I got a Roomba, which is again Wi-Fi connected. You know, the latest refrigerators, everything is connected now. So exactly. like if you count at any point of time, there's probably like 20 devices connected online in my house. Totally. We had a commenter just say that he has a smart microwave and a smart freezer, you know? So even stuff like microwaves and freezers, they're Wi-Fi enabled and they're going to be using your bandwidth. So you need... You know, you need Wi-Fi 6 for that. Um, in the tech streams, people are asking for suggestions. And I'm always telling them, Wi-Fi 6, you know, we have such a, we have the biggest portfolio of Wi-Fi 6 products and Wi-Fi 6 mesh. Um, and, you know, now is really the time to uh, invest in that next generation. Um, so, you know, we've touched on Wi-Fi 6, we've touched on mesh. I want to answer the big question um, with you, Arun. What's the difference between Orbi and Nighthawk mesh? And who should be buying each of those products? Yeah, so if you if you look at it, you know, from the, um, you know, there's there's multiple ways to actually look at that question, right? So Orbi has been a workhorse. Uh, we introduced it, like, in 2016 as the mesh solution from Netgear. And that is really, um, you know, positioned as a market leader in terms of performance and in terms of, you know, how you get mesh Wi-Fi um, for your home. Think about it in a different angle, right? So if you're looking for um, something like Wi-Fi 6 as a solution and you actually have, not everybody has the same kind of um, size of the house. Like somebody who has, let's say, a 3,000 square feet house will need a solution which is probably different from somebody who has a 5,000 square feet house. Or if you're looking for a Wi-Fi 6 kind of devices, like for example, um, I got the latest iPhone uh, you know, last year when it was introduced and that supports Wi-Fi 6. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy phones, a lot of these new tablets and devices. So these are these are all going to support Wi-Fi 6. If you want to get support for Wi-Fi 6 and you really need mesh, you have to look at the solutions that support both. And only RB and Nighthawk Mesh today are the leading contenders in this particular segment. Uh, now, RB is known for its performance. It has tri-band. It has you know one dedicated backhaul that's connected between the router and satellite. Nighthawk Mesh is solving the problem in a different way in terms of being able to provide more configurability in this. So you have you know, features like guest network, you have some, you know, great performance. There's underlying technology benefits uh, of Wi-Fi 6 that is also brought into Nighthawk Mesh. So I would say that based on uh, you know, uh, what a real need is in terms of number of devices, the speed that's coming into the house, or you know, how big the house is, 
these are two complementary solutions. Uh, like like case in point, uh, the RBG 853 or the 852, which is the high end uh, RB, that's like a 4x4 plus 4x4 plus 4x4. So it's like 12 streams of Wi-Fi that gives you support for, you know, not going into technicals, but it's like the fastest mesh system out there that you can buy. So if you have a gigabit connection coming into the home, uh, like, you know, if you have Verizon Fios or Comcast that provides a gigabit or more, this is actually a great solution for you because you can get the Wi-Fi, uh, one gig Wi-Fi coming in and, you know, get it to, to all the devices. But for somebody who is getting, let's say, a 200 megabits or 500 megabits coming into the house, they may not need that, uh, that kind of, uh, you know, uh, an expensive solution, or they may not need that kind of solution. So they would look for, let's say, two pack or a three pack, which is a little bit more uh, suited for their needs. And that's where, uh, you know, you can see here right behind me, the Nighthawk mesh would be a great fit. So it's it's about solving the same problem, but for different kind of people, for different kind of needs. Well, there's that's solutions the that are based on what speed is coming into your home. There are also solutions based on the size of your home and those different types of needs, right? It's also expandable. It's scalable. So ultimately, it's it's a flexible system that can live forever to support your needs today as well as your needs tomorrow, right? That's basically what I'm gathering from from you know, the benefits of mesh. Yeah, I think um, you know Wi-Fi six and mesh they have to go together because um, you need you need that capacity that you need for the smart home. Like uh, you know, um, my kid, even though he's in first grade right now. They have online classes and he's on Zoom in one room, I'm on Zoom in the other room, and then the bandwidth requirements is too hard. So unless we really have that kind of capability to have you know more and more people working from home and you know, having more devices coming into the house, that's where you need uh, the capacity for your smart home. So I think Wi-Fi 6 is, is, is actually you know, out there that any new device that you buy will be supporting Wi-Fi 6. So in a nutshell, um, Wi-Fi 6 is, is really about capacity, right? Support more devices on your network. What are some of the other benefits of Wi-Fi 6 that we can see today as well as in the future? So, so if you look at Wi-Fi 6 itself from the um, access network point of view, capacity for the smart home is the biggest benefit. But uh, you, know, you might think, okay, when 11AC or the previous generation Wi-Fi came in, all the phone manufacturers and the laptops and tablets, they didn't really... Uh, you know, go into having 11AC first. They are more looking at it from, you know, do I really need 11AC? But if you look at it today, every phone manufacturer and every tablet or laptop, uh, you know, manufacturer has Wi-Fi 6 in their portfolio. And the main reason there is that it's actually helping you to also save power because all the mobile clients and, you know, devices, they are power hungry devices. So, you know, after display and some of the connectivity pieces like 5G, or 4G, uh, Wi-Fi is the other power-hungry device in your phone. So how do you save power is by going into Wi-Fi 6. So phone manufacturers and laptops and tablets, they really have uh, you know, immediately taken up on Wi-Fi 6, and they understand the value of it from their perspective. So uh, that's also helping on the client side. Then, of course, there is a speed benefit. So uh, every new generation of technology, be it uh, 11N or you know, Wi-Fi 4 to 5 to 6, there is definitely a speed improvement. So this supports, you know, faster rates by uh, providing additional kind of, uh, you know, uh, technology terms. It's called OFDMA kind of modulation, but not going into that. It's probably 40% faster than Wi-Fi 5 or 11AC. So overall, there is benefit, you know, from capacity, from power saving uh, to speed. That will help you to get, uh, um, you know, overall benefit for the entire smart home. And those are all tangible benefits as well. Right, you're not charging your phone as much. You are downloading, uploading, playing games on your phone or other devices much faster, and you can just connect a lot more devices. That's all tangible, right? That's something you can see right out of the box when you plug this guy in and, and get going. And that's I think that's really cool. Yeah, totally agree. And yeah. uh, you know, timely comment on the on the power saving yesterday was Earth Day, so you know you save the planet a little bit. You know, use less power. So um, it's, it's all on theme. Um, I want to touch on, so we touched on kind of like the, the use case um, from like a, a kind of physical sense, but I want to talk about kind of the app experience as well. Um, but before we jump into that, um, we did get some questions in the chat um, that I think 
it would be nice to address this um, before we move on. Don't leave anybody in the dust. Um, so first uh, question, um, should I use 20 megahertz or 40 megahertz in 2.4 gigahertz? I have about 15 to 20 2.4 gigahertz devices around me. Um, anybody want to take a crack at this one? Yeah, sure. Um, I think um, I don't. I don't know who that question is from, but you know, definitely we'd like uh, to encourage this person to contact our tech support to understand mm -hmm. what are the exact devices that they are in the home, and then you know we can try to figure out what's the best way. But overall, in a general sense, basically the the person is talking about how the bandwidth in 2.4 gigahertz is used. It could be 20 megahertz or 40 megahertz, depending upon what the devices support. Uh, generally speaking, the the wider the bandwidth, it's going to be faster. Uh, but obviously, when you have more devices crowded in that particular space, if one slow device occupies the whole bandwidth, then it's going to slow down the performance. Gotcha. But overall, broad, broad bandwidth is, is the best option. So 40 megahertz would be um, a better option than 20 megahertz, assuming that all the devices are capable of using it. Okay. Cool. Well, hopefully that answers the question. Um, as uh, Rin mentioned, you know, if you need more help, contact support. They'll help you out. Um, or we also have our tech support live stream tomorrow. So come back tomorrow. Um, we can, we can, uh, yeah, there you go. We can uh, dive a little deeper into your, into your question. Um, this one, uh, this next one, um, I think it's as it pertains to uh, Nighthawk Mesh. But the question was, um, are these tri-band with dedicated backhaul systems um, able to separate the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band? Um, some of the tri-band systems at this point are not supporting that feature because it automatically selects between the devices which has to, which is faster, might go into the five gigahertz band and slower, might stay in the 2.4. So it automatically helps you to steer the clients according to the f speed and the capabilities of the devices. So um, it's it's uh, automatically taken care of and uh, the provision is, is probably not there. Now that's a, actually a good feature. So we definitely are thinking about adding more and more features into our products, so definitely a consideration. There you go. Yeah, I think it, it, it's part of the Nighthawk mentality, just have that customization. So yeah. that's a really good future for some of the people who um, you have speakers where you have to dedicate it on a certain band um, and other devices. So um, I know you're working on it, Arun. Yeah, I know. So the other, the other part is that guest network, that's where it comes to, right? If you really are worried about devices actually having the main bandwidth, you can put them on guest network and try to segregate your traffic accordingly. People do that all the time, it's like, or even yeah. internet or wire traffic. Because the guest network is uh, the 2.4, is that correct? Guest network actually supports both 2.4 and 5, uh, but it's a way that you can, you know, um, if you have sensitive devices coming into the main band, like, uh, I wouldn't say sensitive is a gaming term, but I think uh, that's a good option, right? If you, if you want to have no lags on your gaming, either get an NPG kind of router that will help you to prevent all the lags and get the fastest ping, or you can have a wired connection on your router. OK, so, so that and... brings to the point, right? So so I think uh, I just want to bring a uh, you know, quick note onto this one. So so on, on the Nighthawk mesh itself, so this is very, looking very different. You know, this is the actual unit that I have. I said that I just plugged it up from the network. I put back my OB so that I can show this. But uh, this one has um, two Ethernet ports in the back, so one for the internet connection and the other one for the Ethernet connection. That way you can have your uh, wired PC or your um, TV connected onto it or have a switch connected onto it so that you can have additional devices on. Yeah, I'd like to... Uh, sorry, Alec, go ahead. No, no, sorry, no it's okay. Uh, I, I definitely want to talk more about the, the actual features on the device itself. Um, we have one more question, and then we can jump into that. Um, so uh, this individual has a 1,600 square foot home um, with a basement that needs coverage, um, and he has 15 or so devices. Um, would a lower end um, Nighthawk mesh model uh, work well for him? Do you think? Maybe a two satellite pack. Yeah. So I think uh, there are two options available, right? So one is. Excuse me, for Nighthawk Mesh, you have a two pack, which is called the MK62, uh, which is available on you know on all the retailers and even Netgear's um, platform. It's, it's there for sale. Uh, there's also a three pack, which has one router and two satellites that's available in there. 
And often, you know, people, um, what you're seeing is that you might buy a system, but then you would think that, okay, maybe I need one more satellite to add on to it. So you can always buy additional satellites. I think Ben was pointing out earlier that we have standalone satellites that will help you to expand the network. So you can always buy the MS-60 or the standalone satellite uh, whenever you need to add more coverage and speed. So yeah, I, th I think that's one thing. Back, yeah, yeah one, one thing about mesh systems is that people think that it's a sil silver bullet to solve all of their problems when it comes to Wi-Fi coverage at home. But really, every single case is different. And you have to get more satellites or reposition your satellites all through your house. Um, so it's kind of like a, a guess and check. But once when you get it set up and your whole home's coverage covered, you get fast internet everywhere. Like you just forget about it. You forget you even have a mesh system at home. Um, so it, it's one of this. Like, it's a quality of life improvement overall when you have mesh in your house. Yeah, totally agree. And then um, to add to um, our answer for uh, Stephen in the chat here, um, if you're looking um, to save and are looking at a lower end model. Um, you should see popping up occasionally on our screen uh, a discount code. Um, it's Mesh Live 20, I believe, and uh, you can use that on our site. Um, we just redesigned our site, um, our storefront, so it's, that's going to be store.netgear.com. Um, you can find the MK62 on there, which is going to have a router and a satellite, um, and 20% uh, off, so, uh, save some money. So um, hopefully that helps you out. But um, now that we've answered all the questions, um, let's definitely jump into like kind of the specific features of this product of the MK62. Um, so we can start with the app or with the actual unit. Um, it's up to you, Arun. If you want to look at the unit. Yeah, let's talk that. about the product itself, and then um, that'll be a good segue into the app itself. Totally. So, so this, um, so this one, I'm actually showing it here is is a two pack here. So, so you can see the design is very different from what we have seen in the past with RB or any of the other routers, right? And that's uh, that's that's actually you know designed by Charles because we wanted to be able to listen to a lot of customer requests which says that okay the design should be something that's compact. So here I have I have it sitting on my uh, desk here, but you can always fit it under the table or somewhere you know if you have a smaller shelf or something like that that automatically fits in. And the cool thing is that this blends you know the design in such a way that it blends into the uh, home decor. Like uh, I, I remember you know Ben we were bringing up the point that. We need. We don't really need all this antenna sticking out <laughs> in in some of the mesh systems. So that's uh, something more lifestyle look and feel uh, that is that is already provided and fits fits and blends well with the home decor. Totally, it's very um, sleek. Yeah, it looks clean. I think like a big initiative at Netgear is we don't want to be making products that you just throw into a cabinet and like forget about it. Uh, I mean. You know, there is an element of wanting to forget about it and just having that like quality of life. Um, but you know, we we want to make something that you can not be ashamed of putting on your mantle or, or um, and stuff like that. Um, also, a point I wanted to make: um, I was talking to Michael uh, in the tech support stream, and apparently, um, a lot of consumers associate antennas with speed. So they think that because the antenna is on the outside and they can see it, it's faster, which is not the case. Uh, so just to all of our viewers to reassure you, even though you can't see the antennas on the MK62, it is still a very fast um, piece of hardware. So don't worry about, um, you know. In, yeah, in fact, this one has four antennas which is hidden from, from you. So all four of them are actually embedded into inside so that you get uh, these antennas are probably sitting on, on you know each of the four sides. And that'll help you to ensure that you get the best performance uh, without actually compromising on the design. There you go. Exactly. Anything to add to that, Ben? No, I mean, I don't want my router to look like a cactus, right? <laughs> Let's be real. There you go. We, we've got some... Or a spider, uh, right? Or a spider. I was just going to say, we've got the spider... Uh, we got some of the spider routers, but we're moving we're moving towards uh, Star Wars routers and uh, and cute little, little squares. Um, so Arun, tell me a little bit about the difference in the digital experience. Um, you know, we talked about, um, the use case for homes and, and getting that coverage that you need, but what about, you know, setup and settings and, and tinkering with your unit? Um, what's the difference between the Nighthawk and the Orbi and, and what would kind of make people want to go in either direction? Yeah. So I think, um, you know, uh, we have, we've heard a lot from our customers that, um, some of the older generation routers, we used to have the uh, web GUI kind of setup, 
uh, but we are actually moving into more of, a, as you mentioned, the digital experience so that you want to be able to set it up quickly and then have it um, you know, uh, done quickly and also being able to get that kind of feedback from the setup itself, right? So, so the Nighthawk app is the one which is being used for setting up the Nighthawk mesh system, just like some of our Nighthawk routers. So it falls into that family. So this is a downloadable into the uh, from the Play Store, a Google Play Store on the App Store. And um, the setup is, is actually pretty quick. So you can select um, you know, a couple of options. First, it will ask for uh, set, uh, scanning a QR code, and then it will walk you through the process where it will tell you exactly when it's time for you to reboot your modem, which is the one which you connect the internet or the internet LED, uh, sorry, internet port onto this device. Once you do that, then it'll tell you exactly where to, when to turn on the satellite. So if you have one satellite, it'll tell you that, okay, can you power on the satellite now? And then place it probably in the same room so that it will be automatically disconnect, uh, detected. And once it's configured, you can move it somewhere else. So the app is very, very easy and intuitive and very simple to use. Uh, it should hopefully not uh, take uh, more than a few minutes for somebody uh, who's who is not even uh, a person who is used to a lot of setting up networking devices to be able to do this. So is it easy enough for my mom to do it? Totally. That's like the ultimate yes. test. If my mom can do it, then it's good. Yeah, I, I when we when when I started to do this one first time when I installed it, I actually asked my wife to do it. So she was able to do it, uh, you know, completely without any help. So. Well, there you go. There you go. You you used your own family as a test. <laughs> that's 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 the that's the pinnacle of product management right there. <laughs> so yeah, there you if, go. If you give it to, to my dad, my dad would be like, I I don't care. It's technology. I I can't do it. Ben, you do it. Okay, dad. <laughs> Not your IT. And and actually, the other funny thing is that the app has features where you can do remote management. So even if you set it up in your dad's house, uh, like I have done in, in the past, so I can always manage that network by you know going into the app and then selecting that particular product and you know configure whatever things I need to. So remote management is automatically um, enabled. Well, I wouldn't say automatically, but there's an option to enable it um, into the app, and that will help you to manage it. Then so so configurability is is pretty easy there and most of us I know I would be surprised if somebody is setting it up from scratch and doesn't have a Wi-Fi today but you might be replacing your existing Wi-Fi right so let's say that uh, you have your internet coming from your service provider whoever is providing that um, Wi-Fi today and you want to replace that equipment so when you're doing that it's often recommended to keep that same network SSID or network name and password so that all the connected devices will automatically join the new network. So totally, you can that's change. such a big thing. Yeah, you can change the password whenever you want, but I think that's uh, that's often the case where people think, should I change my name? Should I change the name? Um, you know, later, and it's often beneficial for checking the network and making sure everything is fine. You should use your previous network name. Yeah, it's so annoying when you set up people a new router. Like, oh, I. I've yeah, exactly. Everyone gets anxiety, like, oh, let's change every single device and get it onto that new network. Oh my goodness, you don't have to. Yeah, you really don't. Just use the same the same credentials, and they'll all log right back in, no problem. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, so I, I and I think that is that is a in a knowledge base article that will help you to guide through if, if you are stuck. And so that should be part of the support site uh, for Night of Mesh. And you know, um, feel free to let us know if you face any trouble. We are available on chat community and. And all those options are available for customers to contact us. So hopefully yeah. it should be a breeze to set it up. Totally. Um, I was. I'll, I'll have uh, our team um, on the on the that are tuning in uh, link that KB article, um, so that you guys can check it out. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. A, a point about the app. Um, I know that our our not not just on the Nighthawk team, but the entire company as a whole is really focusing so much on the mobile experience, right? And um, we learned in a, in a meeting yesterday how much our rating has improved on the Nighthawk app, which really just goes to show how much of an effort we're putting into making these apps usable and intuitive so that, you know, your grandma can do it. Uh, you know, anybody can just buy the product and set it up, no problem. Um, and I think that that's really improving people's accessibility to these high-end Wi-Fi 6 mesh experiences of being able to buy it and set it up yourself and not having to you know, call a tech to come install it for you. Um, 
I think it's awesome. It's a great, it's a step in the right direction um, for accessibility. Um, I'm yeah, curious. Think, you know, uh, yeah, on, on the feature side of things, right? So, so going back to the app itself, right? On the features part of it, once you set it up, uh, you have to. So, so there is there's one place where you set up your account with Netgear, so that'll be used as your account for all the devices that you have on Netgear. So that'll be used for, um, let's say you want to buy other devices, you can still use that same account. And once you set it up, you know you have features already in the app. Like for example, you have notifications that will tell you, you know, um, how your network is or you know any any issues that is faced. You can actually turn on some of the notifications, which is useful to get you information. Uh, you have speed test that you can run on the device. So uh, if you go to the app dashboard, you have an option to run speed test. Uh, so to uh, so what that gives you is actually tells you what the speed that the router is seeing from your network provider. So anytime there is an outage or something reported by your provider, uh, you should actually run the speed test and make sure that you get the speed that you paid for. So that's a, a good way to do that. Exactly. Yeah, that, that all makes sense. Um... It's always good to see that you're getting what you're paying for because um, you might have to take it up with your ISP if you're not. Um, I was actually, that's a good segue into my next question. Um, you know, obviously these units, the MK62 um, router and satellite are fast. Um, I, I'm curious, you know, what speeds can they go up to? And, and you know, Wi-Fi home networking is, it's not just your router and modem, it's a whole system. Um, you know, you've got your ISP, you've got satellites. What's the best kind of marriage for the MK62? You know, you've got the satellite and the router. What's a good modem to go with it? What speeds can it go up to? Uh, how can you best optimize it? Yeah, sure. So, so in this case, um, um, the spec wise, this is actually um, AX1800, or what that stands for is 1.8 gigabits per second. That's 1800, 1800 megabits per second. So that's a dual band. It has uh, support for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So 5 gigahertz can go up to 1.2 gig and 2.4 up to uh, 600 megabits speed. So from a, no, a raw speed perspective, this is actually a good solution for somebody who has, um, let's say, 100 megabits of internet speed coming in or up to maybe 500 megabits or so internet connection. Uh, for somebody who has got a gigabit connection, this will still work, but uh, it's often an option to have uh, high-end RB system for that particular customer because that supports uh, a 2.5 gig internet port that's coming in so you can get more than a gig speed and also it has a dedicated backhaul connection that'll help you to pump that traffic so anywhere from you know 100 to 500 megabits this is actually a great solution and again you know going back to the point of Wi-Fi 6 right so devices count if you have two or three devices maybe uh, you probably this is an overkill but if you have 10 15 devices or more and you're using them simultaneously. Like I have my TV running Netflix, I have my Zoom call that's going on. Uh, my kids are, um, you know, having Zoom calls themselves. So a lot of multi-activity or if your spouse is working, those kind of things, definitely um, I encourage you to look at this one as an option. That's that's from raw speed perspective. So gotcha. it, it can go anywhere from 100 to 500 megabits. Now, going back to the modem perspective, right? So again, uh, that depends on the use case and the service provider kind of thing, but traditionally mesh routers or mesh systems will work with any internet provider typically, but you would need to have a modem along with it. So let's say in my house, I have Xfinity coming in. In that case, I've replaced that Xfinity by a, a modem that I already bought. So that's like a CM1000, I believe. So that's a DOCSIS 3, uh, 3.0 supported. So you can, you can you know, if it is a cable provider like uh, Xfinity or Cox or uh, those kind of things, you can actually go with a DOCSIS 3 or DOCSIS 3.1 uh, supported modem to go with it. Gotcha. What you're saying is that it works with cable, it works with DSL, it works with fiber, as long as you have that modem in front of it. Um, and then it's always good if you're not getting the speed you're paying for, you know, talk with your ISP and tell them, hey, I'm not getting what I'm paying for. How can this improve? And either they get you new equipment or you replace your modem and you get your own modem, right? We've got a lot of modems, you know, check them out. Um, so it, it's it's good stuff to, to always look at your network and make sure that your equipment is not bottlenecking your overall speed. Yeah, I completely agree. I think, you know, I know a lot of people um, who are like, yeah, let's pay for like really good internet. Like let's pay for like gig speeds. And then they just hook it up to their gateway. And their gateway gives them like 200 megabytes per second. And they're just like, 
what's going on? Why am I not getting gigabit speed? Um, you know, it, it's a whole system. You got, you know, the speeds coming in, the modem can be a bottleneck, the router can be a bottleneck, the satellite can be a bottleneck. Um, so you really have to ensure that you're buying, you know, the appropriate equipment for what you want. Um, so we're on the latter half here. Um, and I want to address some of these questions. We've had a bunch come in since we've been talking. Um, a lot of them are about um, this product. So let's jump into those. Um, we had a question, well, more of a comment, but I think it had a little question caveat to it. Um, uh, this individual says, uh, Kevin, um, they're looking at these versus Orbi, um, but he doesn't like the single um, SSID of the Orbi. Um, so I think we talked a little bit about uh, splitting the bands. Yeah. Is there capability to do that? Um, so those are things that we are always looking at. You know, uh, you know Netgear being uh, the the leader in there, we are actually looking to improve the features list on, on our product. Like, for example, recently, um, I don't know if everybody is familiar with the armor, the cybersecurity protection, but that's that's one thing that we've introduced in many of our products today. So so we are we are looking at improving all the new features that's there uh, for the product. So, you know, fingers crossed, we should hopefully have something. Cool. Yeah. So if, um, you know, wanting to have those separate bands um, is something you're interested in, Kevin, um, definitely something we're looking into. Um, and just to plug the code again, because I want to make sure that you guys, if you are purchasing, um, that you're getting that discount. Um, it's cycling on our screen here. Um, Mesh Live 20, uh, Mesh Live 20 on the Netgear store, which is store.netgear.com. Um, will get you 20% uh, off um, the MK. 62, which is what Arun has on his screen right now. It's that tell your friends. Kit. Give them that code. Yeah, tell your friends. Let everybody know. If somebody needs a mesh network, yeah. now's the time. And, and that's also probably the add-on satellite that's coming in, right? So and if you buy two, you can always add on uh, additional satellite if you think that you need more. That's, mm -hmm. that's it on the store, too. Totally. And that's an awesome yeah. part of mesh networks, expandability. Um, cool. Let's just keep going through the questions. I want to make sure we get all of them. Um, this individual says, I believe this product is AC 1200. It's AX 1600. AX 1800. 1800. Yeah. AX 1800. So it's not AC. So AC is a previous Wi-Fi 5. This is already moved to Wi-Fi 6. So it's, it's much faster than that. It's 50% I mean, faster than AC. Okay. So that's the first part of the question. Um, for your clarity, AX 1800. Um, does it connect with this? No, it connects with AX1800. Um, and is that third band um, using fast lane technology so that there is no loss in bandwidth? Um, my understanding is that that last, that third band is dedicated. Um, so there will not be that's, a loss. That's in not bandwidth. part of the Nighthawk mesh. No, so Nighthawk mesh doesn't have the third band, it's a dual band mm -hmm. system. Gotcha. Uh, there's an AX1800. So the third band, uh, what he's talking about is for the RB, the RBK, 852 and 752. Uh, Nighthawk Mesh is dual band, so it has dual only band. two gotcha. bands. Yeah. Okay. But the connection is on the five gigahertz for the backhaul. So it's it's a shared backhaul. Yes. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Um, hopefully that answers your question. If you have a follow-up, let us know. We'll be here. Um, so Ar Arun, really quick, while we're on that topic, um, if you're comparing like a Wi-Fi 5 dual band mesh system with a Wi-Fi 6 dual band mesh system, who's going to win in terms of speed? Yeah, so so for any Wi-Fi 6 clients, if you have a Wi-Fi 5 system, you are already losing that battle, right? So if you have your latest phones, uh, you know, that you have from Apple or um, Android phone that you have from Samsung or anybody else out there in the market or the latest PCs and laptops, you definitely need to upgrade to Wi-Fi 6 because otherwise you are losing out. So that's, that is the clear answer. And uh, the, the speed itself is, you know, in this case, that's uh, the dual band, the similar kind of spec, two by two plus two by two is only AC 1200, whereas in this case, it's AX 1800. So it's, it's already 50% faster if you look at it from that uh, raw number. But for Wi-Fi 6 support, you definitely need a Wi-Fi 6 system. Well, there you go. Um... Just more and more reasons to buy Wi-Fi 6. Whenever we get a question about, and I already, I already mentioned this, but just to reiterate, whenever I get a question in the tech support stream, what router should I get? It's always Wi-Fi 6. Um, 
you know, when it first was introduced, it yeah, was you, so expensive. You don't want to go to the past, right? You, exactly. you want to be able to future proof. And I think we didn't talk about this, but all Wi-Fi 6 products are down backward compatible, I should say. Mm-hmm. So 11AC, 11N, 11BG, all these technologies will be supported in Wi-Fi 6. So even if you have an older generation device, this will still work and you're not compromising your performance by moving to the new, newest technology. There you go. It's, exactly. it's not like, you know, streaming is replacing your card cutting. You can do both. All right. Um, we have a question from Brandon here. Um, does the MK62 support network switches to allow for hardwiring? Um, Arun, you've got the products there with you. Do you want to show um, what ports are included? Uh, so so when, when it, what is coming in the box is basically you have these two units. So one is a router and it's very easy to identify. So the router will have a QR code that I removed from when I set it up, but you'll have a code in the front and you'll have an ISO logo in there. You have two ethernet ports there. So one is labeled in yellow. I don't know how much you can see this, but the yellow one is where the internet goes in. And the uh, the other one, which is unmarked, that says ethernet, uh, that supports any wired devices. So if you have a switch, you can actually connect into it and then have your wired devices connected to it. So that's a router. And then the satellite also has one ethernet port, uh, just like you see here. So if you have this in your in the living room or a bedroom and you want to connect a switch or any other device, you can always do that. So it's it's possible to do it either in that way. The other option is you could, you know, this will be paired over wireless in that case. You could also have a wired connection running from the router to the satellite. That's called the wired backhaul. You can always do that. Um, it just uh, is more for technology enthusiasts. Not yeah, so general- some of the newer homes that have their homes pre-wired, you could definitely use that and yeah. have that wired backhaul. Yep. Gotcha. Good stuff. I, I always suggest to our viewers on the Friday streams, you know, hardwire when you can. If it has an Ethernet port, you know, try to figure out a solution to hardwire. You're going to be getting those those devices off the airwaves, and you're going to be getting them off, you know, the bands, and you're going to have more capacity. Um, you know, with with Wi-Fi six, it's not too much of an issue because it has such high capacity. But you know, you know, take your due diligence and make sure that you're um, leaving those bands as open as possible. So it's very good that the product has um, Ethernet ports because they're so usable, not just for enthusiasts even, but for everybody. Um, Question from Roy here. Uh, what happens when we purchase the device and it does not have any internet connectivity? Can you still set up the device using the GUI? So I think what the question um, is, is can you you know maybe yes, hardwire so, into a computer? So, so it's, it's recommended that you set it up with the app because that's, that's the fastest and that's the best uh, process for anybody to set it up. Um, there is also a backdoor way by which you can set it up with the GUI, but it's recommended that you go through the apps to set up. Now, in the case of the app, it will look for the internet connection and guide you through the steps. So if you don't have an internet, I think uh, you better get the internet and then set it up. But if you if you really want to set it up in a different way, you can always do that. Gotcha. Yeah. Refer, refer to the user manual for more instructions on how to do it. And that's included, right? That's uh, on the web. So on the, the web. Support okay. portal should have the user manual. So if you don't have internet, use your um, your phone. You can use your cell network to access the. Uh, go down to Starbucks or something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you you can always set it up with the GUI. Yeah, but it's recommended um, to use the app. Definitely. Yeah, like I said, the app is has been optimized so much um, recently, especially between these last couple of years. It's been such an emphasis for us. So the app is a really easy way to set it up. So. That would be our number one suggestion, but if not, there's other ways. Um, okay, question here from James, who just purchased the AX11000 and wants to know why should he um, add a mesh network to his already beast of a router? <laughs> yeah, so AX11000 is the RAX200 Nighthawk, and that's actually a really powerful router. It's an amazing router. It's also Wi-Fi 6, so... I'm glad James, was it James? Yeah, yeah glad James. that you purchased it. So, so you know, happy to welcome you to the Nighthawk family. Um, so as I mentioned, right, so it depends on how your home layout is, how the things are. 
you know, some of the homes you may have your internet coming into one corner of the house. So uh, having a powerful router really helps if it is placed in the center of the house. So if you can move the router in the center of the house, that will help you to get the coverage. And, and um, you know, that's that's actually a really powerful router. So you have a great choice in there. But if you are looking for a mesh network, you know, the cases are when you have a dead spot or you have coverage issues in some bedrooms or you don't get the speed that you pay for in all the rooms. That's when you need a more of a mesh network. And the ISP internet is coming in one corner of the house, so you cannot place it out in the center. If it's a pre-wired home, you should be good to you know, connect everything over the uh, CAT6 or CAT5 cabling. But in cases where you really have a constraint that the layout of the house, devices, speeds, and blackouts, that's when you really go for it. And for James, I think if you if you are really interested in getting more coverage, you can always look at some of the mesh extenders. So there is, uh, I believe, uh, an EAX80, which is the Nighthawk yep. extender that goes with the Nighthawk router. So that also helps you to create a mesh network. So so that's not a prepared network, but that's something that you can configure as a mesh network. So uh, I think Ben, you brought up the point that extenders are a, also a solution for folks who have your Nighthawk router and want to extend the mesh network. But the advantage of Nighthawk mesh system itself is that this is already prepared. The satellite is already connected, so it's much more simpler to set it up. Uh, but for folks who are looking for a solution to create a mesh network with their latest routers, you can always go for a Nighthawk extender. Right. And some people will think, OK, I can you know, use this Wi-Fi 5 extender with a Wi-Fi 6 router, and they're expecting you know, blazing fast speeds all through their house. And that's not really true, is that? That's correct. Yeah, so mentioned, right? So if 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 your devices are capable, you know, you get, like, if imagine that your pipe is, you know, <laughs> really tiny, right? Wi-Fi 5 is already going to be slightly tiny in that. And if it is already like that, you are not going to expect to get the same kind of flow from from the uh, extender to your devices. Uh, so So obviously, it's recommended that if you have Wi-Fi 6 router, better to have with the Wi-Fi 6 extender. And I think we have um, the EX80 that's already out there. We have the EX20 that's probably on pre-order right now. Right, Ben? I think As of now, yes. Good. Yeah. Pre-order. Go to our website. Pre-order. <laughs> so they're on the screen. So, so if two, you two great check options out... for you to get the mesh. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If you want to check out what's coming or, or what we recently released, um, just take a browse through. And if you have any questions about it, just uh, let us know. Um, we'll be here for another 10 minutes. Um, question from Travis, Travis McGee. Um, I have an Orbi RBR 50 tri-band Wi-Fi in my house. Um, with more adult kids in the house, I need more range and better speed. Can Nighthawk work with Orbi? Uh, so I can take this one. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, no, it does not. Um, you have an Orbi system, so you're kind of in that family. So if you do want to expand your Orbi network, we do sell dedicated Orbi satellites. Um, so you're able to go on our website. If you have the RBR50, um, the, the spec that I would recommend would be the RBS50. Um, kind of similar to what we just mentioned. You know, you could connect a, a, a Wi-Fi 6 extender, but there's no reason to, right? Your, your core of your system is Wi-Fi 5. So you're going to want to get that Wi-Fi 5 extender to make sure that you're not overpaying um, or if you wanted to upgrade the whole system to wi-fi 6 um, you can get a kit uh, a wi-fi 6 kit um, can you do a hardwired backhaul between orby and nighthawk is that possible no give it a try <laughs> if like but overall i think it's it's uh, recommended that you actually have devices within the same family so mm -hmm. if you have an orby better to get an orby but um uh, if you have a wired connection, it should it should work, but it's it's worth a try. Okay, so RBS fifty is our official suggestion. Go with the RBS fifty. Yeah. Um, cool. So uh, we have Angel here who just bought a MK sixty two. Thank you for supporting the MK sixty two. Thank you, Angel. You got you got the man behind behind the scenes right here. You made your product. <laughs> uh, he has Xfinity gig internet. He gets better download. This isn't even a comment. He's just he's just giving us some praise. <laughs> uh, he gets better download thank speeds um, now than he did with Google Wi-Fi. So thank you for supporting the product. Really happy you're getting good speeds. If anything goes wrong, let us know. We'll be here to help you out. And uh, the last question in our queue. Um, 
this person also recently purchased mesh recently purchased mesh wi-fi 6. um he has the orby but wants a hardier nighthawk um will that work and if so should the nighthawk be the primary with the orby satellites synced to it so we kind of already answered this a little bit um, in one of our previous answers but um just to reiterate um nighthawk and orby aren't designed to work together you know if you're a huge techie and you want to figure out how to make it happen i'm sure there's a way but it's not kind of how we designed it to be um they're designed to kind of work with their families so nighthawk is designed to work with nighthawk orby is designed to work with orby um depending on what your current router is if you have an orby router and you you know want to get a hardier system um you could you know add a satellite to expand your system. If you want to have it be faster at the core, you could get a new Wi-Fi 6 Orbi kit. Um, you could get the MK62 um, if you wanted that as kind of an entry um, Nighthawk Wi-Fi 6 mesh network, or you could do um, what we suggested earlier with like a, an RAX 200 and then adding that EAX 80 satellite um, for like a really, really beefy Nighthawk um, system. Um, I think those are kind of the main scenarios I can imagine. Do you guys have any other ideas? I mean, you touched upon it, right? Go ahead, go ahead, Ben. Sorry. Yeah, uh, people kind of say, what's the difference between you know the lines of Orbi and Nighthawk? Um, really, there, there's not much, right? Mm -hmm. It's premium networking, right? Just some are a little easier for people to get set up in their home than others, right? Orbi is a little easier than a Nighthawk because Nighthawk is more configurable, um, and and it, it, it you're totally okay in whichever camp you're in, but you should stay within that camp for a little bit, right? And kind of expand on that system. Otherwise, you're you may not really see a huge benefit if you hop from one to the other, because um, it's you know hardware is hardware. You can't change the law of physics just because it's it's a different type of brand or, or a different look and feel, right? Um, I, I think that kind of what it boils down to. Yeah, I think in terms of configurability also, right? So RB works with the RB app, very seamless. You no, know, once you add on satellites, that process is very easy. You can you can do the add satellite from flow from the menu itself and then it automatically recognizes and you can set it up. You can see all the all the stuff that's out there. Uh, whereas Nighthawk is operated by the Nighthawk app. So the Nighthawk mesh is operated by the Nighthawk app. So if you add more satellites onto that system, you can always uh, monitor using that. So there's there's benefits to both sides. Um, you know, there's it's also about the personal preference and the look and feel and how it is. So so that's uh, that's actually, you know, a good point to bring it up too and how the configurability is different. So, so Nighthawk, we expect that you'll have more configurability and you know, coming soon, uh, things, uh, things that will be added more and more, so. I like to think of it as like Orbi is the, is the Apple and um, Nighthawk's the Windows. <laughs> um, Windows yeah. is probably too much, but I think it could be the Android versus the iOS. Oh, there you go, there you go. Android versus iPhone, there you go. They both work. T more tinkering and more more technical details. Like, uh, I, I should have mentioned this before, but there's a standard called Easy Mesh, which is, uh, um, which is basically by which uh, you can have different kind of devices talk to each other because it uses the underlying standard. So ad hoc mesh is based out of that. Um, the features underneath or the pipes underneath are using the Easy Mesh as an option. So. So that's been developed by WFA, and um, that's one of the things that it relies on. So, so you can expect that you know as this um, this grows even more and more, um, you will see a lot more. I would say tinkering or you know tech enthusiasts would be able to do a lot more. There you go. Um, so we're down to the last four minutes of our stream. So um, you know I know there there might be some secrecy around it, but you know what's what's next for Nighthawk Mesh? Like what is what is the future of the system, uh, Maruna, and where do you want to take it? So, <laughs> yeah, so you mentioned, right? So we don't uh, necessarily talk about upcoming features or upcoming launches and these kind of events, but you know, today you have uh, the two pack that's already available on our website. You have the three pack that's placed in some other retailers, so you can go uh, purchase that. You have the add-on satellite. That's already there. So right now the focus is more about how you ensure that uh, you get more features added onto this system. Uh, you know, guest network is supported. You could see uh, probably features like uh, you know uh, quality of service, dynamic QoS kind of thing. 
um, and more features to come. So I did touch upon earlier on the armor cyber security that's available in some of the uh, routers and all the products. So uh, that's that's actually something that we can look into. Um, so nothing nothing to sh you know officially share, but you can expect that a lot of great things are coming from uh, this this side of the camp. Maybe not specifics, but features. Features is the is what we want to do. Cool. Okay. Cool. So. Um, yeah, we're winding down. Um, I, I even think, I think from our viewers as well, like what do they want to see in this product, right? Because this is built for them. What do they want to see? Do they want to see, you know, uh, more security or um, do they want it to make them breakfast, right? Let us know. <laughs> I'm looking for that feature. So Arun, write that down, right? <laughs> Only coffee. No Only breakfast. coffee. There you go. Wi-Fi enabled coffee maker. <laughs> we'll do a collaboration with, uh, with Keurig. Um, all right, guys. So we're at the end. Um, I just want to reiterate, um, we are running that 20% off sale for the MK62. Um, it's kind of been cycling in the um, in the overlay that we have here. Um, but just to make sure it's very clear, um, Mesh Live 20 on store.netgear.com will give you a 20% discount um, on the MK62. So if you're interested, um, if you liked what you heard about here in the stream, um, check it out. You know, even if you just want to poke around the product page and learn more, um, it, it's a great way to learn more about our products. Um, and, um, you know, we hope we could uh, we hope we could uh, educate you a little bit in the stream. Um, do you guys have any have any closing notes? No, everybody stay safe. You know, thank you so much for the love and praise for Netgear and hope you buy more network products and Orbi products and I think uh, you know have your network very stable and running really fast, and we always welcome feedback from the customers. So please reach out to us through community chat, social, whichever means that you feel fit. And we are looking for suggestions and product features. So keep them coming. I saw a lot of interesting features that's coming up in the social media and also in community. So we are looking into each of those, even if we are not responding to you separately, but we are looking into improving our products every day. So. You know, security, privacy, protection, and performance are some of the key values that we're looking at. So rest assured, Netgear is there for you, and stay safe. There you go. Anything to say, Ben? No, I think Arun got it. I'm there just waiting for uh, the coffee maker. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Guys, um, if you enjoy the event, um, we do, uh, what's the word, announce these on our social media channels. So if you want to come to the next one, um, you want to stay connected with us and stay connected with each other, um, follow us on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn. We're all over the place. We're here on YouTube as well. So, um, you know, stay tuned in. We, we, we love to do these events and talk to you guys. Thank you for joining the stream. Um, and make sure to swing by tomorrow with any uh, technical support questions you might have. We'll be here live at 12 from 12 to 2 uh, Pacific time. Um, ready to help you out. So uh, with that, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Arun and Ben. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.